I'm Jamie White, the Director of Research at the Institute of Economic Affairs, and I'm here with Professor Stephen Landsberg from the University of Rochester, and we're going to talk about capital taxes. Stephen, there are a lot of taxes on uh, capital in various forms, company tax or corporate tax, capital gains taxes, inheritance tax, and so on. Many people think these are important for justice. Fairness, what's your view of them uh, from an economic point of view? Oh, from an economic point of view, it's almost always a mistake to tax capital, and here's why. If you earn a dollar, and I tax your wages, so I take, say, 50 cents away from it, then you've got 50 cents left over, and you can decide to spend that now, you can decide to save it for next year and earn a little interest on it, save it for the following year and earn a little interest on it. The fact that I'm taxing your wages is going to discourage work, and that's a shame. Unfortunately, almost any realistic tax we can design is going to discourage work. But at least your choice about the timing of your consumption is not distorted. You make a, a decision, would I rather consume a little less now, would I rather consume a little more in the future? The problem with taxing interest or dividends or any other kind of capital income is that it still discourages work just as much because one of the reasons people work is so that they can earn money and earn interest on it. So we still are discouraging work every bit as much as we would with a wage tax. And at the same time, we're discouraging saving. We're, we're encouraging people to spend their money as fast as they can rather than incur tax on the interest that they would otherwise earn. So you get a double whammy from the, from the capital tax. It's, it's, it's sort of twice as bad as taxing wages. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that may all be very well and good, but what about all these rich people who have capital income and all these poor people who have wage income? The fact is, you can tax wages as progressively as you like. You can tax, and all of the capital income that you see these rich people earning ultimately is a return to wages. Somewhere back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they earned wages, possibly very high wages, and the, in the interest they're earning now is interest on those wages that they earned. If you tax those wages at a very high rate, then you are effectively taxing uh, uh, their entire flow of consumption for the rest of their lives. You can do that in as progressive a way as you like, but you can do it without distorting their savings decisions, without encouraging them to consume as fast as possible. And it, you know, if you're interested in conserving resources, the last thing you want to do is give people an incentive to consume as fast as possible. So with the income tax and no tax on interest, you're distorting just one decision, namely how much to work, with, but not two decisions, namely how much to work and whether to save or consume. That's exactly correct. Right. And, and what about other capital taxes, inheritance tax and so on? Do they have the same effects? You, yes, they do. And of course, those taxes build and build and build on each other. I earn a dollar, I earn interest on it, or maybe I buy a share of stock. I buy a share of stock. The corporation in which I bought that stock pays a corporate income tax, which is, of course, really a, a tax on the return to me. It's a tax on my income. Uh, then I pay a tax on the dividends they pay me. A 40% tax on capital income can easily become a 90% tax after you take account of the fact that that income is taxed and then taxed again and then taxed again and then taxed again. What effect do you think this then has on what you might call the structure of the economy? It encourages overuse of resources. We use too many resources we leave less to the next generation, we build fewer factories, we build fewer machines, and that has a big effect on wages. The main determinant of wages, at least certainly in the short run, is uh, the amount of capital available, where capital does not mean stocks and bonds, capital means machines and factories and other things that make workers more productive. If there are more machines, more factories, wages are gonna be higher. If rich people are encouraged to buy yachts for themselves, the resources that go into making those yachts are then not available to build factories and machines. And then wages are lower, and that's a very big effect. Well, thank you, Stephen.